Hey everybody, welcome to Sew with Joe. Today we're picking up where we left off last time, sewing this beeline patch over, <laughs> mostly over a little hole in the corner of my pocket so that I can get my, pocket, my hand in and out of my pocket easier. So let's get in. Ow! Oh, that's a good way to start. Silly me. As I was saying, let's get into it. It's one disadvantage of the uh, the big couch needle, or cushion needle, whatever it is. Stick. Whoops. Stick with the yellow thread, thread that I was going with last time. trimmed off. There's a thread caught. So good, uh, good world news today. For those of you who are having issues seeing things close up, as I am, and I've talked about with my uh, wonders of bifocals. Um, that's helped quite a lot in my in my life so this is big news uh, for me and for anyone losing their near sight near sight there are eye drops coming out which apparently restore your near vision. So rather than using reading glasses or needing bifocals, you put eye drops in. And apparently for they last for six to ten hours of what they call improved close vision. So, end of the day, you know, the where the um, drops will be wearing off a little bit. You know, your eyes might be getting a little tired. You might need to go with readers again. You know, if you're if you're up late. And six six to ten hours though of improvement. That's pretty impressive. And just amazing that it exists. A little dry this morning. So the uh, condition is called presby presbyopia. The loss of nearsightedness. And tends to kick in around the age 40, which was about right for me. And it affects a lot of people. I forgot to write down the percentage, but I think it was around uh, around 50 to 60 percent. Uh, so don't uh, don't feel bad. It's not just you; it's everybody. Um, they say the drops are if most effective in the age range of 40 to 55 age range. Um, 
apparently after that, like once you hit 65, then it just gets so bad that it doesn't do, do enough for them to claim that it's helping kind of thing. Um, I'm sure it probably still does help a bit. They say it's most effective in the early earlier stages of presbyopia. If you're looking for it, the brand name is Vuity. It's spelled V U I T Y. Vuity. And it is apparently available by prescription right now in certain countries. So talk to your doctor, your eye doctor see if that might be something that you could use. I'd like to look into it. Because then wearing my glasses with bifocals would be like having super eyeballs. Do the drops. Be Superman. No, just might actually get back some of the, uh, the close vision that I have lost. And if it's happened to you, you know it's frustrating, especially if you so. Threading the needle isn't just an expression. And sometimes it can be as difficult as the situations where that phrase is used. It's my uh, wife Sarah bringing me my morning coffee and cookie. Always much appreciated. And it's been a bit of an odd morning, um, so I'm running a bit late today, and other things are happening. a little chilly this morning we uh, we are getting a lot of snow um, and I find the snow is really tied in with my mental health so I'm a little bit wonky today if you've noticed a difference in voice or whatever but 
I'm doing okay. One really big story. Um, good world news. And one that uh, is interesting because we have a pretty decent population of monarch butterflies here and noticed quite a few of them this year. And uh, apparently the monarch butterfly population is up by quite a staggering number. And um, where we get this information from is uh, Bismo Beach in California, USA. They have a place where the monarchs come to rest on their migration. Cheers. Because monarch butterflies migrate, in case you didn't know. To migrate a long ways. Now, last year they did a count of the monarchs and they counted 200, 200, 200 monarchs. And that's a low number for anything being on their migratory path. Now, this year, in Pismo Beach, they found what was described as a living curtain of yellow and black on the tree trunks where the monarchs tend to gather in the mornings. And they did account as best they could and estimated 100,000 so from 200 to 100,000 in a year which is an increase of 4,000 900%. If they did their math right, 4,900%. I'm, I'm going by their numbers. Which is pretty staggering. Honestly, a little hard to believe. Um, just to put a little bit of skepticism in, in here, I apologize. Um, just, and I don't know much about monarchs and how they reproduce, but is it possible for that to happen? Like, maybe did they just miss their migration last year I don't know but it is a huge improvement and and I did notice uh, quite a few monarch butterflies last year and not nearly as many the year before so I, I can attest that there was quite the jump and it's really really beautiful to see a large group of monarch butterflies floating through your yard. If you take a moment to picture that, just like we're getting quite a few of them. And it, they, they can either flutter and stay in place, or if there's a little bit of a breeze, it's amazing. They just grab the wind and they're gone. Um, like I saw a monarch travel probably 
40 yards in a few seconds. It was really, really impressive. I guess they're so light, they just get grabbed and taken. And the wind is so incredibly powerful sometimes. That's another fun thing to watch if you uh, are into the YouTube world. Um, videos about Mother Nature beating people up. Um, like you go to open a door and it takes you around with it and somehow your like, hand gets caught on the handle or whatever. And you just get flung by Mother Nature. Coming up on a few um, seams here. So we break out the, uh, the thimble. Time for some thimbleism. Thimbology. One thing I gotta figure out is to uh, how to do my corners. Get these a little nicer. Actually, I was just saying in another video how I always stop in the corners and then start again, and now I remember why I do that because the corners end up looking ugly. So there's there's the pro tip. There's the remembering. There's the reminder. Um, stop on the corners and start again. It's better to have a, an end spot there than to drag it around the corner and have it look like that. Let's see if I can get this back through the bottom with the thimble. Close enough. The one great thing with stuff like this is you don't have to be that precise. You know, and really with most sewing these days, people aren't going to notice a stitch here or there unless it's like some finely tailored suit. And if you're wearing one of those, then you can afford to go and have it, you have it tailored, right? some year old jeans you can get away with doing a lot <coughs> and oh no where's my patches it's not that important Continuation on that monarch story. Um, the, uh, the government, they are committing ten million dollars. To improving the monarch butterfly habitat on the west side of the Rocky Mountains. 
so that should go a long ways to bringing the monarchs back. And there was talk of putting them on the endangered species list, and now that there's this jump, not sure if that'll still happen. is good this morning. Cheers. So, it seems that a lot of the time when the government gets behind helping the species, then things happen. Need some of those eye drops. Or a set of readers to go in front of my uh, bifocals. Uh, for this really fine stuff, anyways. I'm trying to pick threads away from threads. Always gets a little bit difficult. <clears throat> no, that hasn't gone to plan. Every once in a while I uh, pull a little too hard. So, what I'm going to do is not grab quite that much yellow thread. I've been using these scissors a little bit too much. So then I just I go back a little bit and sew over the last few threads and just kind of bind them with the new threads. Seems to work okay and uh, if it does eventually come loose then I just throw more stitches over top. And just be 
becomes this giant stone that you push up a mountain for eternity. Getting a little bit quick and dirty with this one right now. Don't to worry too much if the uh, other threads get caught in it because I'm already grabbing the other threads. So it's going to look a little bit crazy in that corner, so you may as well just go with it. And I could go in and undo the whole thing and redo it or whatever. Or go back a little ways and tie it off and then continue, but... Eh. And I've completely lost what I was doing. Uh, okay, that's the loose thread. That's that. Okay. Getting a little lost in the, uh... In the old threads there. I can't do it. Seems I may have miscalculated on the amount of thread I needed as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to tie this off after uh, kind of redoing what I just did and get some more thread. Uh, yeah, not, uh, not happening all that well for me today, boys and girls. that too closely because that's not how you're supposed to do it. A good example of what happens when things go wrong. Right there. That's okay, I'll just continue on from there. And it'll be just fine. I'm almost done and I know this is taking a little while, but I want to get this patch done today.
Harpoon, uh, in case you're wondering what you can do to help out with the Monarchs, since they are not as plentiful as they once were. Uh, what you can do for them is to plant nectar producing flowers. And uh, I know that they need milkweed to reproduce, but people, or the, the scientists, recommended, <laughs> they, they recommended that you not plant milkweed, because some milkweed isn't native to that area, like they'll actually bring milkweed from other areas and people will plant it and that can actually confuse them. Um, so I guess if there is milkweed growing naturally where you are, you know, maybe don't cut it down. Um, encourage it, let it grow in. Uh, however, maybe don't bring in or plant milkweed from other places or potentially from other places if you know that the um, uh, garden center can't remember the right word for it right now They get their milk, milkweed locally, then great, you know, plant it. But if it's someplace that possibly brings milkweed in from other places to transplant, then I would say avoid doing that. So yeah, just plant nectar producing flowers, let let places grow in. That's one thing that we're doing on our on our property is we're, we're letting certain areas of our yard grow back in, um, trying to encourage the the flowers, the natural wildflowers in our area to grow in and uh, be there for the the bees and the uh, the butterflies and all all those things because you need insects to survive. The world needs bugs as much as they can bug you sometimes. <laughs> um, they are they are pretty necessary. Like food not growing and people starving to death, basically, type of thing. So, you know, plant some flowers. Don't mow the lawn in one section and just let, encourage wildflowers to grow in, you know. Don't be that guy on the on the block that, you know, lets all their dandelion dandelions grow in and spread everywhere. You know, the neighbors might not appreciate that much, but if you can have wildflowers or plant other flowers, you know, anything, any, anything that produces nectar, so even some of your vegetables um, will, will flower, so, you know, make a garden and you'll be encouraging that sort of thing. Give them food, give them food for the travels. Feed the butterflies. It's not just a good thing to do, it may save your life. It may save your grandchildren's life if you're the one with the uh, 
ways of the reproducing sort. Not everybody, oops, not everybody chooses to have children these days. Don't want to alienate anyone. So yeah, beeline patch, dead from the inside. Yeah, doesn't have to look good. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've realized <clears throat> realized that um, I need to stop in the corners for a reason, not just my fastidiousness, fastidiousness but it makes it look a little nicer as well. We're learning. One more coffee. Cheers. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I do appreciate the time we get to spend together. <sighs> Hope you're having a good day. If you're not, try to get through it. I know you can. It's all in your head. You just gotta figure it out. Till next time. Keep chilling. Don't forget your cookie. Please.